Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Wagme TV. We have a good one today for you guys. Should have a serious impact on crypto investors. We're talking about the BlackRock new Bitcoin spot ETF. Um, so we're going to dive in, talk through a bunch of different things from the news and background to the differences between this filing and the last filing. And we'll go ahead and get into it. So, Madi, you want to brief us quickly on the news? Yeah. So really quickly, wanted to have like a two, three sentence summary. So BlackRock, right? To those of you not familiar, the world's largest asset manager, I believe they have over $10 trillion in assets under management, um, has refiled its application with the U.S. Uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, so the SEC, for a Bitcoin exchange traded fund or ETF. So the new filing has additional details, things like the name of the partner that'll provide market surveillance and support of the ETF and a couple of the pieces. Um, but that's kind of the big news that's come out. And, you know, we've had Larry Fink come out and talk about Bitcoin a little bit more um, robustly about kind of his thoughts around it. So it's really led to a pretty decent pump um, in the recent days of Bitcoin. Um, but yeah, you have some background for us, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. You covered a good amount there. And and I think just adding a couple of things, you know, obviously this is the second time they're applying for the Bitcoin ETF. They applied on July 3rd of 2023 and then previously on June 15th of 2023. And we'll walk through some of those differences, but I think it's, it's important to take a step back and understand a little bit more in depth of where BlackRock is coming from. I believe previously Larry Fink wouldn't really speak too much on Bitcoin. Like you said, he's come out more in support of it in, in the last you know few months and, and year or so, uh, talking about it as a hedge against inflation and a few other things that you mentioned. So that's really important. Um, and the other thing to, to touch on is like this is a you know ten trillion dollar uh, asset fund, um, the largest fund in the world. Um, and to give you a perspective, like these guys own hedge funds, they own private equity funds, and they own real estate funds. Like that, they're not just investing in you know, random stocks or ETFs or things like that. They, they own large um, portions of, of things like that and assets like that. But these guys are so big that they're actually, they own funds outright. Um, and so I think it's, it's really important to take that backdrop and take that context when we're talking about a spot ETF, because if these guys are coming in and doing it, they're going to do it right. And they're going to have the, the right sort of backing for it. Um, you know, they have the, the type of uh, liquidity and the type of assets under management to back something like this. Um, and it's grown to to become the most successful and largest um, asset management group on on the planet. Um, and, you know, they have investors in, in over 100 countries and just everyone is kind of piled on to the, to the BlackRock train, so to speak, all the big players. So um, I think with that background, it's just good to know that, you know, they're, they're coming from a, a very, very supported place when it comes from asset management um, and, and cash on hand. Uh, this isn't just, you know, someone from Binance or, or someone from a, a crypto uh, firm like coming in. This is a, a fully blown asset management fund that has assets over the world and a lot of different asset mixes. So um, I think it, it'd be good to take that context and then get into a little bit of the differences between the spot ETF that they just filed for on the third and the one that they filed for on the 15th. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think to start, right, we, we called it out at the beginning, uh, the name of the partner that will provide market surveillance in support of the ETF. They actually released that name. They didn't specify a name of that partner in the first filing. And this new filing, uh, they've named Coinbase Global um, as the partner that will actually provide that. So, of course, as we all know, Coinbase, leading cryptocurrency exchange, exchange strong track record of providing market surveillance. Very interesting that the SEC is attacking Coinbase right now and BlackRock decided to go with that. But I think we'll get into that a little bit later. I think that was one of the big pieces of news. Um, some other pieces, the amount of Bitcoin that the ETF will hold has actually been released. They'll hold a minimum of 500 Bitcoin <clears throat> with the ETF. The fee structure has changed, which we won't dive too deeply into. Um, and then the last two, I think, are, are pretty important. So from a listing perspective, the first filing, they were saying they were going to list that on the New York Stock Exchange ARCA. Uh, this new filing, they're actually saying they're going to list it on the NASDAQ Exchange, which a lot of us are a lot more familiar with. Very tech heavy, 
very innovative, uh, heavy, right? It's, it's basically all those tech stocks that have been running like crazy, honestly, this year. Um, NASDAQ's been doing very well from that standpoint. So I think it makes a lot of sense. It's a minor change, but could have some implications for the, the liquidity of the ETF just because of, you know, everyone, a lot of people know what the NASDAQ is when it comes to exchanges and trading and investing in general. I think, you know, we were talking about this right before we, we hopped on. My personal take on kind of the biggest change is in the first filing, BlackRock actually proposed to invest in Bitcoin futures contracts. The new filing, BlackRock is actually proposing to invest in physical Bitcoin, right? So that's a pretty significant change. It means the ETF would be more closely tied to the price of Bitcoin. They'd actually be buying the underlying asset. Um, and so I think that's, that's something that's super important to, to be called out with this piece. I think, you know, to kind of cap all of this, right, they've made all these changes. Um, the SEC obviously did not approve <clears throat> of any ETF up until this point, right? They cited concerns about market mani manipulation, liquidity, obviously haven't been on board with some of these things. A lot of people are thinking because BlackRock has, you know, come into this, they really haven't gotten a lot of ETFs rejected, that it's pretty much a guarantee. Um, so it's really going to come down to a lot of different things. Were these actually concerns from the SEC or were they almost just excuses in order to not have Bitcoin become more popular and um, not allow, you know, general investors that aren't involved in the crypto space to actually enter into this space? So I think there's a lot of question marks around this. Obviously, it's been very bullish up until this point. And they've made a ton of changes to the filing to try to match the feedback that they got from the SEC. But I think it's it's important to note that obviously a Bitcoin ETF has not been approved to this point. And so what are the true reasons and did they provide those true reasons in the first place? Yeah, I, th I think you're laying out some great points, Mata. It's so important to address the differences and also the reasoning behind why the SEC hasn't approved one yet. Because if you look at the history of, of spot ETFs, it's not just BlackRock, right? I mean, Fidelity Investments applied for one, Invesco, who is kind of the management fund behind the QQQ ETF. So one of the most successful technology ETFs in the NASDAQ um, and amongst others, right? So we've seen actually a solid amount of, of spot ETF um, uh, applications. And it's kind of interesting to think why, why there hasn't been an approval for it because theoretically it makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, because it, it would open up, first of all, there's a lot of interest in crypto. And a lot of times the main blocker is the security aspect. Is it legit? Um, how do I store the crypto? How do I have, you know, what happens if I, if I get hacked, things like that. And I think having things like, you know, if you have, if you hold the spot ETF from BlackRock in a Fidelity account, you're going to have FDIC insurance. So if any hack happens or anything like that, you know, you're insured up to, it's usually 250 K per account. Um, so things like that, I think legitimize Bitcoin more so in, in the eyes of a lot of investors. So it's really interesting because it seems like every side would benefit from this, you know, like the government would would be able to tax Bitcoin more efficiently. Um, you know, funds would get fees attributed to people buying Bitcoin, more people could hold Bitcoin. So like, I feel like a lot of the, the major players that are going to kind of leech onto this would all benefit from it. So it's kind of weird that it hasn't been approved yet. And, and maybe it's just that maybe it comes down to a fundamental of just not understanding technology from from their perspective. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what this does for, for the crypto market. Yeah. I think, you know, they always call out like SEC didn't approve this because of manipulation, right? Obviously the assets grown a lot <laughs> since a lot of these filings have happened. Um, obviously you now have BlackRock stepping in again, the largest asset manager on planet earth, right? Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people say BlackRock kind of owns the SEC in some, some standpoints, right? So the real question again is, what's the real reason, right? Is the real reason because they just didn't want to, right? Does the White House not want to move forward with some of these things? Um, do they want to wait so that they can release FedNow and a CBDC and all these things that we've talked about on this channel, right? Do they all kind of coincide together? So I think that's, you know, just playing devil's advocate, right? Everyone's really excited. I mean, in 2017, a little bit different, right? The futures piece came out, the future ETF for Bitcoin. <clears throat> Everyone's like, it's the greatest thing. Bitcoin's going to the moon, right? That's when everything collapsed. So of course, this is different. They'd be buying the underlying asset. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still BlackRock. They're doing this um, to take a profit. So it's something that we have to take with a grain of salt. And then we really have to understand what the SEC's goal is here 
and if they were kind of telling the truth in the first place with the feedback they were giving, or if they were just trying to come up with reasons for not approving it, right? <clears throat> I think something that was really interesting was seeing Larry Fink kind of switch his perspective. Back in 2017, he was calling Bitcoin uh, an index of money laundering. Right. And so now he's talking about the digital gold um, narrative and it's a hedge against inflation and devaluation of currencies, all these things, all these things that we've been saying for what, a year and a half on this channel at this point. And we've been other other crypto heads have been saying for a while, it's it's good to hear him say something positive. But it is interesting to hear that from one of the most influential people on Wall Street. Right. And seeing that sentiment kind of flip. Um, I, I would assume if he's saying that, right, he's hearing that also from some of the big name investors that are coming to him as well. So a couple of different things to, to really look out for when it comes to that. <clears throat> uh, do you have any like final thoughts on this, Sia, before we kind of cap this off? No, I think you just called out some some great points. Like you always got to consider who's involved, what are their motivations, and I think it's important to call out that Larry Fink wasn't always a, a Bitcoin bull. Um, and I think it's safe to assume that now he realizes he can make money from it, so he's going to flip his his standard on it. I mean, it's fair to say this ETF is probably going to have a pretty solid expense ratio, meaning obviously there's going to be a percentage they're going to take every year from you if you hold Bitcoin in it. Um, and so I'm I'm sure he's just seeing you know dollar signs, and he's like, okay, I'm going to flip my my perspective on it. But I think you make a good call out when you say, okay, well, why is the SEC doing this? Why is BlackRock doing this? And it makes me wonder too if, you know, they've denied all the other spot ETFs and, you know, have kind of just focused on BlackRock over the last few months because of BlackRock's influence and, and the connections that they have with the SEC. So I think it's always important just to just to recognize that, you know, be safe when you're investing in this kind of stuff. But um, best case, it leads to amazing Bitcoin adoption. Worst case... Right. You know, it doesn't get approved and, and we wait till another one comes out. So, um, yeah, I mean, that brings yeah. an entire new range of investors into Bitcoin specifically. And then obviously probably into the, the crypto market a little bit as well. If they see some massive returns from it, obviously people are going to want to keep coming back to it. So, you know, the impact could be very, very great. Um, it's just something that we have to keep our eyes on and, and make sure that we're not getting stumped or, or following the sentiment too hard. I think overall, right, the ETF application, it's a positive development for the cryptocurrency market. Shows the world's largest asset managers serious about investing in Bitcoin and could really pave the way for other major, major financial institutions to actually follow suit with them, right? Um, of course, the caveats, SEC has yet to approve any spot Bitcoin ETFs, not just BlackRock's. Um, obviously, there's no guarantee that BlackRock's application will be successful. So as always, make sure to manage your risk when you're going into these situations. Um, but ultimately, I think some some fairly bullish news, at least thus far in the short term from from this for Bitcoin. I would have to agree. And, and we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments, everyone. I mean, I think this is definitely some positive news, but take it with a grain of salt. Um, as always, like, comment, subscribe. We, we definitely want to hear from you guys. Um, and we'll see you guys on the next episode of Wag Me. Thank you. Wag Me.